sweeping down upon the underworld to smash gangland comes the friend of the unfortunate, enemy of criminals. The mysterious, all-powerful character, a problem to the police. But a true state of the law, in reality, Dan Garrett, a rookie patrolman, loved by everyone but suspected by none of being the Blue Beetle. As the Blue Beetle, he hides behind a strange mask and a suit of impenetrable blue chain armor, flexible as silk but stronger than steel. Today's episode of the Blue Beetle is entitled The Sea Serpent. Rumors have reached the city that a sea serpent has been ravaging the nearby coast. Already, several bodies have been washed ashore. Each of them has borne the mark of a serpent's fangs. What is behind these rumors? Are they true? Is there really a sea serpent ravaging the coast? Or is there a definite plan on foot to frighten people away from the shore resort? As our story opens, Dr. Franz is listening to the radio while dusting the shelves of his little apothecary shop and awaiting the usual morning call of his young friend, Patrolman Dan Garrett, who in secret is really the Blue Beetle. Morning, Doc. Oh, hello. Hello, Danny. Hey, what's that, a radio? Don't tell me you're going to modernize this quaint little shop of yours. No, it's not that bad. I just thought I'd like to have a little music once in a while. The customers also like to get the baseball scores and the new Fine. Uh, what are you and Mike Manigan doing these days? Any special assignment? No. No, it's been a little quiet since we chased those racketeers out of Chinatown. So what do you think about this sea serpent scare? I don't really know what to think of. Are there such things as sea serpents, Doc? Well, the term sea serpent has been associated with huge dragon-like creatures we read about. But as a matter of fact, a serpent can be any size. According to reports, the bodies of these bathers who were bitten showed signs of having been poisoned. That's strange. We interrupt our regular program to bring you a special news bulletin. Breaker City. The body of another bather was brought ashore by lifeguards this afternoon. The bather, a man about 50, showed signs of distress while swimming about 300 feet offshore. His cries for help were immediately answered by lifeguards who rushed to his rescue. However, when brought to shore, he failed to respond to efforts at restoration and died on his way to the hospital. Doctors who examined the man reported finding marks upon the man's leg resembling snake bites. They contend that the man did not drown, but died from the effects of poison. Late news dispatches will be given over this station as the sea. We continue now with our regularly scheduled program. Very strange. Yes, in fact, I'd say the whole thing looks very fishy to me, if you'll excuse the pun. Well, what are you going to do about it? Well, our territory doesn't extend beyond the city limits, but I'm going to ask the commissioner to let Officer Manigan and me take a run down to Breaker City and... See what we can uncover. That's a good idea, Danny. The sea air will do you good. If I go, I'll drop in the sea when I get back. Are you wearing the poison detector ring I gave you, Danny? Wouldn't be without it. You may find it useful on this case. Remember, the stone turns from green to yellow in the presence of poison. I know. Well, so long, Doc. If I catch a sea serpent, I'll stuff him and bring him back to you. Driving through these pine woods. Yes, and the rain doesn't make driving any easier. You know, it, it seems kind of strange to be walking on a case in cities. They don't feel right somehow. I guess I missed the feel of the police captain. Shine of me police badge. <laughs> you still look like a cop man again. Do I, Danny? Yeah. Nobody'd ever mistake you for anything but an honest to goodness cop. Well, then that's what I am, I am. And I'm proud of it. Hey, say, there's a light ahead. Oh, that must be the lake house. Maybe they can put us up for the night. We can drive over to Breaker City in the morning. Yeah, that's a swell idea. I'll pull in and you run in and see if they can take care of us. Hey. Good evening. Kind of wet outside, isn't it? Yes. Well, weather for ducks. Uh, traveling far? My friend and I are on our way to Breaker City. 
We saw your lights and decided to stop off for the night. Uh, are you the clerk? I am the owner. <laughs> Own several hotels around the lake here. Yeah? Oh, I, I beg your pardon. You got any accommodations? Sorry, but we're all filled up. Mm, business must be good. Or has the rain forced the tourists inside? Yeah, it isn't the rain. We're having the best season we ever had. That's so. I thought the summer resorts were complaining about poor business. Not here at Pine Manor Lake. Well, I guess we'll have to keep going. It isn't far to break your city. You'll find plenty of accommodation there. Well, if you're filled up, they'll be too. I hardly think so. They're not doing so well this season. This sea serpent scare seems to be keeping people away from the seashore. But one man's misfortune is another man's gain. We seem to be getting the business that usually goes to the seashore. Is that so? Well, that's very interesting. Tonight, I'm more anxious than ever to get to Breaker City. <laughs> Danny, <laughs> this is a swell room they gave us overlooking the ocean and only four bucks double. Yes, we must be the only guest in the hotel. Yeah, the lobby is as dead as a museum after closing hours. How about a bite to eat before we turn in? That's a good idea. Let's go in the coffee shop here. Sir, gentlemen, what'll it be? Uh, some java, a piece of apple pie a la mode, and uh, a slice of cheese. Eh? Yours, mister? Uh, well, my friend here is dieting, but I'm hungry. Bring me a glass of hot milk and a toasted roll. For such a husky lad, you're a small eater, Danny. Ah, uh, but what I eat makes muscle. Say, look through that window out there in the boardwalk. Isn't that Joan Mason of the Chronicle? Yeah. Well, she's coming this way. And there's a man following her. Hey, Danny, come on. <coughs> Take your hands <coughs> off that girl. Beat it, my guy, I'll croak it. You and who else? Drop that gun. Oh, yeah? Well, how do you like this? Oh. After him, Daddy. I can't run. He got me in the leg. Is it bad? No, just a flesh wound. Eh? I'd better stay here and look after you and Miss Mason. Oh. oh, Daddy, I was never so glad to see anyone in my life. Well, are you all right? Yes, but... What about Officer Mannigan here? He can't walk. I'll be all right if Danny will lend me a shoulder to lean on. Oh, come on, Mike. We'll get you into the hotel and call a doctor. In the morning, we'll send you back to the city, a wounded hero. Okay. But right now, I want that piece of apple pie a la mode with cheese and the cup of java. <laughs> Say, Joan, you talked with one of the lifeguards who's made several rescues? Yes, I told him I was investigating the sea serpent story for the Chronicle. What did he say? He said that in each case he'd seen something that looked like a serpent's tail lash out of the water just before the victim cried for help. Well, have you found anyone else who claims to have seen the sea serpent? No, I haven't. Hmm. That's strange. Yes, isn't it? Where did you pick up this man who was following you? In a restaurant on the boardwalk. He came in while I was eating and followed me when I left. Well, this sea serpent scare is either a practical joker's plan gone haywire, or it's a well-thought-out scheme to ruin the season for Breaker City. Doesn't look like a joke to me. Mr. Downs, the owner of this hotel, is ready to commit suicide. He's losing thousands of dollars every day. Well, you better get some sleep. I'll see you in the morning. What about Manigan? Oh, I'll put him on the train and ship him back to the city. The doc said his wound wasn't serious, but he won't be much help to us here. How about meeting me out on the pier? They're pulling in the net at sunrise, and they may catch a sea serpent. <laughs> I'll be there with some salt for his tail. Hey, we better hurry, Joan. They're starting to haul in the net. I'm right with you. Oh, there's Mr. Down. I want you to meet him. Good morning, Mr. Downs. Oh, hello, Miss Mason. This is Dan Garrett. Beautiful day, sir. Maybe to some people, but not to me. You seem down in the mouth. Uh, you'd be down in the mouth if everything you'd strive for was gradually slipping away from you. I understand you're financially interested in Baker City. I own the Sunset Hotel, for one thing. This sea serpent business is making it tough for you. 
Tough is not the word. I'm on a special assignment from the New York City Police Department investigating this case. Oh, are you? Well, I certainly hope you can clear up this mystery. It's costing us hotel and concession owners thousands of dollars a day to keep open. And there's no business except day excursionists. Well, I'll certainly do what I can. Uh, suppose you and Miss Mason come with me. I, I want you to meet Professor Meredith. He's an authority on fish and such things, and uh, he's in charge here. I'd like to meet him. All right, boys. You can begin hauling in the net. Oh, Professor Meredith. Oh, good morning, Mr. Down. Uh, good morning. I'd like to have you meet Miss Mason of the Chronicle, Mr. Garrett of the York City Police. Oh, I'm happy to meet you both. Thank you. Uh, by the way, who's that man standing over there? The one with the dark hair. Oh, that's Fred Nash, one of the lifeguards. Yeah, and he's the man. Yes, I thought I'd seen him before. I beg pardon. Uh, oh, I was just telling Miss Mason uh, how long it'll be before you pull up the net. Oh, they're pulling them up now. In just a moment, we'll discover if our hall contains the sea serpent. All right, men. Bring the net over to here. And keep the sides up. We don't want to lose any things. Okay. Variety, Professor. Aren't those sharks there? Yes, small ones. That's one our skate. Weak fish. The camel bat. There's one there that looks like a balloon. Oh, that's a blowfish. Well, there's a sea serpent. Only a meal, Miss Mason. But a big one. Well, I guess we'll have to try again. What's the use, Meredith? You won't find anything. You might as well admit we're licked and close up. I'd give a lot to know just what's out there. Well, I'm going to find out if it's still there. Why, what are you going to do? I'm going to find out if these waters are safe to be there. Mr. Dell, you're not thinking... Yes, I am. I'm going into that water. If the sea serpent is there and wants human flesh, he can have mine. I, 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 that's madness. What have I got to lose? I have no family. Everything I have is invested in this beach. If I can bathe here, so can everybody else. I'm going to get it over with. Stop him. He's gone crazy with water. Hey, you lifeguard, grab him. Oh, there he goes, right off the pier. I'm going after him. No, Dan. There go the lifeguards. Go, Dan. Keep your eyes on them, everybody. I'm going in, too. No, Danny, no. Let's go of me, Jones. I'm going out in that rowboat under the pier. Look, Mr. Downs is swimming away from the car. He's a strong swimmer. Whatever made him do it? This thing has played on his mind for a long time. Look, one of the guards is calling for help. One of you men run for the doctor. And phone the lifeguard station for the pool motor. Look, Mr. Downs has grabbed the lifeguard and... Something's happened to Downs. He's let go of the lifeguard and is sinking. Hurry, get into the boat. Oh, the servant's got Mr. Downs. He's got him. I know it, I know it. What is the slimy thing that lurks in the waters off Breaker City? Is it a sea serpent or a poisonous fish? Will Danny solve this mystery? Or will the Blue Beetle have to go into action? Time later at the Breaker City Hospital. Dan Garrett and Joan Mason are waiting outside one of the private rooms for Professor Meredith. How is he, Professor? Mr. Downs is dead. Dead? Yes. Well, didn't the uh, pool motor help him? Mr. Downs didn't die from the effects of submersion. He then... died from the effect of a poisonous bite. Then you think... There were two punctures on Mr. Downs' leg, like those left by the fangs of a fairly large serpent. No one saw anything in the water. Strange how the effect of that serpent's bite is exactly like the bite of a cobra. The reactions are identical. Could it be a water moccasin? You don't find water moccasins in the ocean. And their venom doesn't work in the same way. It works on the blood. Cobra venom works on the nerve center. Paralyzes the muscles, controlling the act of breathing. Could it, could it be a fish? I hardly think so. 